handling various aspects of merger and acquisition. A firm, Sheila Arvind and her company, is associated with reputed public sector companies and large private limited companies. It is my profession is such that I have to attain the confidence of the board of directors at the first place. Being a company secretary and part of the board, I need to ensure that you know that that confidential information shall be well within me and nothing beyond the, the board, apart from the directors. And I have to be very very alert in the uh, in the entire uh, board meeting. That presence of mind has to be there. And I, I know uh, in that uh, the situation we face during the board meeting. And which is your biggest professional feat you or your firm, Sheila Arvind and Company, has achieved? I consult couple of government companies. You know. Uh, government companies in the sense definitely you have high profile board members like the uh, uh, senior IAS officers, IRS or IFS officers. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders and Initiative by World Development Corporation. My name is Taney Ol and I'm an anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry veterans to come together to share their knowledge, ideas, thoughts and best practices with one another as well as with upcoming industry leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings of all our industry followers. We hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Leader interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learning from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone, right? They help us to identify, nurture, and work on trade secrets that have already proven a success formula for so many. And this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such personage on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Ms. Sheila Arvind. We welcome you on the show, ma'am. Thank you. She is a distinguished practicing com company secretary who brings a wealth of expertise and qualifications to her role. With over two decades of extensive experience in company law matters and income tax, she specializes in secretarial compliance, board and general meetings, secretarial audits and due diligence for large companies and government corporations. She is adept at promoting, forming and incorporating companies and LLPs and handling various aspects of mergers and acquisitions. Her firm, Sheila Arvind and her company, is associated with reputed public sector companies and large private limited companies showcasing a proficiency in managing diverse portfolios with turnovers exceeding 1000 crores. She excels at providing accounting and advisory services to a broad spectrum of entities, including government corporations, foreign companies, and LLPs. So ma'am, to begin with, could you share with us your journey towards becoming a practicing company secretary, including the pivotal moments or experiences that have shaped your career? Thank you very much, uh, Tanay, for the uh, brief introduction. I'm glad. Okay, to begin with, um, well, it was indeed a very stressful but joyous uh, journey for me to become a company secretary at the first place. The journey to become a CS was enlightening, uh, pushing myself to study at least 12 to 15 hours a day by to gain deeper knowledge into the course, mainly concentrating on company law matters, corporate governance, accounts and taxation, and other legal framework. Our course was such that, you know, like we used to study a lot many subjects, just not restricted to these uh, things. Yeah, we cover almost all the law-related uh, subjects. So, um, uh, these were the main things and also including corporate restructuring, SEBI and many more uh, things. And more than anything, upholding the ethical standard. That was the main thing what we learned out of this uh, course that made us to be more... Um, you know, glued to the course and glued to the this one profession. It showed us the pathway, like as to how we have to behave uh, in a lot many ways. It groomed us overall. And I, being a semi-qualified uh, chartered accountant, uh, started off my practice as a tax practitioner to begin with. Uh, soon after my uh, masters, also masters in commerce. And in the meanwhile, I took up uh, company secretary course uh, um, 
as I and I realized that uh, this is the thing like what my area is and my interest is. And since then, since I had already set up a practice as a direct tax consultant and providing accounting and other uh, allied services, uh, so preparing for the CS examination was really challenging because I used to be in office from morning till evening. I seldom had time and uh, managing the family front and uh, uh, the children and all those things because I qualified late. And uh, on the top of it, I had to study at least for 20 to 15 hours a day. That was very much required for me. These were the things which I had to, you know, ensure that I do it. If I miss in a day, I had to, you know, compensate that for the weekend, at least. Weekend was my time for study. That's all, nothing beyond that. So, <laughs> this is the way it was. And uh, it was challenging. But each time uh, after all these things, once I qualified, I had that satisfying, uh, you know, uh, feeling that, yeah, whatever uh, the hard work I did, that uh, reaped uh, you know, good. And, uh, you know, uh, but nevertheless, this took this challenging uh, thing, the phase, whatever as, whatever it is that worked out very well for me. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. So more than that, um, uh, thereafter, um, I, I have to hear once I qualified, like uh, I being part of the board, uh, it was very challenging for me and I had to understand uh, what is that uh, uh, my input for the board I need to give, what should be my preparation for the board, everything. And it is my profession is such that I have to attain the confidence of the board of directors at the first place. Being a company secretary and part of the board, I need to ensure that, you know, that that confidential information shall be well within me and nothing beyond the, the board, apart from the directors. That was very much important and I had to ensure that I, I imbibe that kind of a confidence amongst the directors. Sharing the you know, board with the eminent personalities, big you know, directors is no joke and that was a real challenge for me. And I have to be very, very alert in the uh, in the entire uh, board meeting. That presence of mind has to be there. And I, I know uh, in that uh, the situation we face during the board meeting. And you know, like we can't anticipate what kind of question I get, even though it is not my uh, scope of work. Uh, when the director asks me something, I should be in a position to uh, you know give them the reply. And in that way, I have to prepare for the each subject. And appraising and uh, educating the board of directors and the shareholders about the statutory compliances and the requirement of the board and requirement for the company and uh, updating the amendments is a key element as a company secretary. So this is what it is. And which is your biggest professional feat you or your firm, Sheila Arvin and company has achieved? Mm, honestly, every day is the biggest feat for me. <laughs> That's because I consult a couple of government companies, you know, uh, government companies in the sense definitely you have high profile board members like uh, uh, senior IAS officers, IRS or IFS officers will have to deal with that kind of, uh, you know, persons. So conducting board meeting on such board is always very, very challenging. As I said, many a times they ask out of uh, the scope of work. And I should be, you know, like, uh, I have to answer. I, I can't say that this is not my scope of work. I don't know anything about it. The moment I say I don't know anything, that becomes a negative aspect for me and they don't trust me any longer. So I have to be prepared, very well prepared. And uh, each board meeting, like, uh, you know, I prepare in such a way, like each board meeting is my first meeting kind of a thing. So I get so tense and, you know, the, throughout the night I prepare thoroughly. I keep the documents ready for these things. Those are the very thing. And uh, I have worked in a couple of merger and acquisitions for related to garment company. That was very, very challenging, especially coordinating with these officers and the senior officials, including uh, the required uh, you know, the departments and all those things. But I finally succeeded. That was a very fruitful day for me in my career. And uh, another instance uh, is uh, handling this governance and compliance in a disputed board, wherein uh, with the deadlock of uh, shareholders with uh, one of the uh, toughest challenge uh, for me in the board, because they had their uh, side, uh, you know, like it was a deadlock, 
I could expect many, you know, things from both the parties were, you know, consulting the many professionals, taking their opinions and other things. And then, then that they used to come and dump on me. What does this say? This is what this uh, act says. This is what this, uh, uh, you know, re relevant rule says. So, you know, I, I, sh I have to handle them uh, thoroughly, like telling that this is what it means for our board, for our kind of a situation in the company. That was really very challenging. Um, but it was a you know, very good experience uh, to convene the, such kind of a board meetings. And also bringing in this foreign uh, MPIs and handling foreign investors is all the more challenging. You know, first of all, they should have a you know, comfort zone that India is good to invest you know, Indian companies are very good. Uh, uh, you know, they get uh, good uh, returns for their uh, investment. That, uh, you know, comfort zone, I had to give it to them. That was very challenging. Yep. Yeah. Ma'am, you have been a non-vocal advocate of continued professional development. What would be the reason for it? You see, I'm not very, uh, you know, actively uh, visible in uh, social media. I'm away from it most of the time. I do not like it because, uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that there is a restriction on these things. I have been giving a um, uh, lot of uh, you know, sessions, uh, regular sessions to, on the various forums. I write uh, you know articles to our magazines regularly. And I've been giving this, uh, you know, regular sessions to the professionals, including at uh, income our uh, ICSI, ICAI, also in the income tax departments. And I'm actively involved in the professional development. And I train uh, regularly, I train IRS uh, officers in the income tax department training institute. I'm a regular faculty over there. And also I visit a couple of these banks for, uh, you know, especially for this, um, uh, this uh, what is that? Uh, called uh, investment and uh, other things, We're giving a uh, lecture on investments. And so this way I'm very, very active, but not on social media. That's it. Ma'am, how and when did you develop an interest in ESG and corporate governance? See, as a company secretary, uh, CSR compliance also becomes my responsibility. I have to ensure that uh, I have to, you know, uh, the company spends its, uh, you know, CSR uh, spendings in a proper manner and uh, well managed and other things. And uh, since I've been handling end-to-end -end CSR compliance and projects also, and uh, it is very much required for me to understand about the ESG and the corporate governance as well. It is, it goes hand in hand, in fact. And uh, especially in today's world, ESG is a key aspect. It evaluates how organizations manage risk, uh, opportunities related to environment, social and governance. And it has also gained the momentum not only with the global growth, but also in the Indian economy. It's very much, it is, uh, it is an in thing today. Whomever you ask, uh, they even, they talk about ESG. There are so many funds as well as on data. These are uh, basically non-financial factors which influence companies' performance. Uh, indirectly, it, uh, you know, it influences a lot and it promotes transparency in operations, which is very, very important. And it also helps in tackling the employees, climate change, etc. So there's so many other things. The globe is targeting us for the zero, zero carbon emission by 2050. And uh, as on that, I think if I'm correct, if my memory goes correct, that there should be more than $30 trillion of uh, investment in ESG alone you know, as on data. And uh, what you need to observe in this is there is no legislation as such yet for ESG. Even though we talk about ESG, that legislation is yet to come. There are very interesting, these are very, very interesting aspects. When I'm intending to become a part of the board as an independent director or in any other capacity, it, I need to know more about ESG and corporate governance. I think this would be a real, real value addition to the post as such. Ma'am, as an ESG and corporate governance expert, what values do you bring to the table? As of now, as I mentioned, it is not mandatory for all the companies. Currently, it is mandatory only for about 150 top listed companies. And uh, I'm sure slowly they would uh, make this uh, mandatory to many other large and mid-sized companies. 
So, um, I think I should be doing more research on ESG and understanding more on this and ensure that what kind of a, you know, value addition I can give it to the board. Like, the, as I said, bringing in transparency in operations, especially, and uh, climate change. What best we can do as a company to, you know, support this environmental, this thing and the climate change. What, how, how we can tackle in the company. These things is what matters. I think uh, I will be able to give uh, more uh, addition in such aspects. Mm -hmm. By following a good ESG practices, an organization can definitely manage the risks and best opportunities for their growth. Being a, an ESG professional as such, and I'm also a social auditor, and I'm not only uh, I not only uh, you know compliance and uh, reporting, but also I play a pivotal role in uh, shaping the ethical and sustainable practices of the organization. I feel this is essential. And uh, to just to inform you, I have already handled. Uh, I've been handling also a couple of NGOs and trusts. So I feel uh, uh, you know it's uh, required. Uh, I would uh, be more productive as an independent director or an NED if I'm there as in the board and I will become a value addition to the board, definitely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that uh, not only as an independent director, but also as a company secretary, it is very much required for my profession. Ma'am, what are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen in your field with respect to changes in technology? And what changes do you expect to see with the advent of IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, cloud, digital twin, big data, web three, all these new technologies, man, the list is war. <laughs> Even though I have a fear of losing the importance of the whole scenario, I really see the need for the change. You know, like many a times I feel what this is doing. It's taking away, it's not allowing me to uh, you know, use my brains at all, I feel. Because um, you give whatever you want to do it. You just type it in the chat GPT. It gives you the entire thing, what you want to do it. Even the speech. What speech you want to give you, downloads everything and gives it to you. Where is the question of using your brains? Right? Like, yeah, I get an argument telling that, okay, look, uh, but no, whatever it is given you, don't take it uh, at, uh, at the face value. Just go through it and make the corrections. No, but uh, I don't agree. <laughs> you know, we will. St of course, this is an in thing. We have to. You know, today the entire globe is facing towards the latest technology and adopting mm -hmm. AI, such as uh, Chat GPT and other these things. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do agree that it is an in thing. But uh, I feel uh, many a times I do feel that uh, uh, this one, you know, like uh, using our brains, using our own uh, intelligence, also matters a lot just cannot uh, be doing this blindly. But I say, especially for board meetings and, uh, uh, you know, AGMs and general meetings and other things, these uh, new technologies helps us a lot. Big companies, we, there will be so many shareholders and uh, postal ballot for all those things is an excellent boon for us. You know, it has reduced our uh, work to a larger extent. We have to really admit that and we should appreciate this a uh, lot. This is there. This is very much helpful for me. No, no doubt about it. Ma'am, we are building a community here of industry magnets. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry. What are your thoughts about this in initiative taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Eval Mehta and the whole World Development Corporation team? Excellent initiative by Mr. Zishan Pathan and uh, Eval Mehta and the entire uh, World Development Corporation team and uh, hoping to continue in the same spirit in future also. Uh, it is initially, when I came across this, uh, I really thought, uh, why should I get into this? Why should I enroll myself to this uh, institute? Because I'm already qualified as an independent director way back in 2020. Uh, but uh, still, I thought, why should, in what way will it be helpful to me? In what way DI will support me? But when I uh, realized, when I read more about the institute and when I attended the session, uh, the, uh, the inaugural session, and I realized the need for this uh, uh, institute for fine-tuning my knowledge. 
and uh, hoping that will definitely shape my future in this platform. I'm hundred percent sure. But the kind of uh, you know sessions what you attend, the kind of faculties for whom you have, amazing, excellent work. I'm very very happy with the institute. Great, ma'am. It was fantastic conversing with you, and I'm confident that your insights will truly inspire future leaders. Thank you so much for joining us today and wish you the best for future endeavors. Moreover, trust that this initiative by Directors Institute unquestionably has expanded the participants' understanding and enrichment. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.